clothing for Roblox GFX can be really annoying. But today, I'm going to be showing you the easiest method I've found to make it work inside a blender. This works on every single rig type, including blocky rig, boy rig, woman rig, whichever you want to use. But before we start, as usual, make sure to join the GFX Runner Discord server, link in the description below if you do need any help throughout this video. We've got a dedicated GFX support channel there to help you. I also just launched the brand new GFX Rhino Patreon. If you want the raw project files from this exact video and other future tutorials, I do. Ad free extended tutorials where I go a bit more in depth, one on one GFX support, and so, so much more. Check it out at patreon.com slash GFX Rhino. I'm going to be putting a lot into this Patreon going forward, and I've kept the launch price a bit on the lower side while I'm still just building it up. So if this sounds useful to you, feel free to have a look. Link in the description below. All right, so step one is to open up Roblox Studio, and we're just going to be importing our avatars as we normally do. So I'm going to be using the load character light plugin and just import our R6 avatar as we normally do. So I've just found some random guy's avatar right here. Once again, you can use whatever rig type you'd like. And the next step is the first step to actually doing 3D clothing. And that is by using an R15 rig. So we're going to be going up to the avatar tab at the top here, go under character, and then you want to make sure it is set to R15. Then just choose whichever avatar type you'd have. This little menu right here is the best way to just get completely blank rigs. As you can see, I've just got a completely completely blank R15 boy rig. The reason we want an R15 avatar is because Roblox 3D clothing only works with R15 avatars. So you can probably already guess what the next step is and that is literally just to open up the Roblox uh, catalog marketplace and you just want to find whatever accessory you'd like to use. Something very important to note though is that for blocky rigs you always want to use these sort of ones here that are actually shaped blocky and meant to fit blocky rigs because these ones obviously won't work on these sort of rigs, the more humanoid shaped rigs and vice versa these humanoid shaped ones aren't actually going to work on like a blocky rig once you've found the clothes you'd like to use it's as simple as just going up to the link here and double clicking on the like numbers that are here and just going control c to copy it and then go back into roblox studio and what we need to do now is import them onto this avatar to do that we're going to go under the toolbox go under plugins and you just want to find pretty much any like avatar accessory importer the one i'm going to be using is easy insert i don't know if it's really the best one but it has been the one that I've been using for a while. You can just do easy insert and it should be this one here. Although you can see it might be a little bit outdated, but I'll link whatever the best one is that I could find in the description below. And then just simply click install and then it should be installed up in the plugins tab. From there, simply select the avatar here, our blank avatar that we imported, and then just type in the code right here and then click insert. The worst thing about this plugin, you're gonna see once you import accessories, sometimes they teleport away. To fix that, you simply just need to click F on your keyboard and you'll be taken directly directly to the avatar and you can move it back in place if you'd like. Now there are two big downsides to this method although it's the easiest as you can see here it can be a little bit unreliable you can see sometimes it might not fit perfectly and that's just Roblox's fault. Now there's two things you can do about this first of all you can just find another accessory or the second option is later on inside a blender I will be showing you how to do this just adjusting them into place a little bit but for now I'm also going to go ahead and import these pants right here so I'm going to copy that code select my rig and then go under easy insert now you may have noticed that before i searched up pants but i instead changed it to shorts i honestly thought shorts would work a little bit better but apparently not and from there it's literally as simple as selecting your avatars in fact since i changed it to shorts i should probably take his pants off now i've gone ahead and moved my avatars to the center of the map here so this one's at zero 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 and this one is a little bit off from the center just so they're not you know fully clipping but somewhere near the center will mean that when you import them into blender they're going to be in the center of the map in blender as well and then it's as simple as just selecting both of them right clicking on them and then going save slash export export selection all right so now opening up blender i've just deleted everything in the middle and we're just going to be using the roblox starter rigs you can really use whatever rigs you'd like to use but i'm going to go ahead and import a boy rig right here and this is going to be the rig that i'm going to use today now you want to go ahead and go up to file import wavefront obj locate to the file where you exported your characters to and before clicking import make sure to enable split by group this is a very important step because now you're going to see if you do that um why not? Okay, I messed up a little bit there, but now I have got them imported. And what you're going to see by enabling that split by group, you're going to have everything split into different parts, which is going to be really helpful because we need to pretty much kill this guy and delete his whole body. Just leaving over the accessories, same with this guy here. It's going to be a little bit harder um, since he's an R15 rig, but it does seem that they're all named just rig. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I should just be able to hold down shift, select them all, click X, and then there you go. They're all deleted, and we just have these accessories left 
left over. Now I'll just select these head accessories here, right click, set origin, origin to geometry, and that'll mean if you want to use the move tool, you can simply just move it along. For normal accessories, such as these accessories here, you can just attach them as you normally would. Now for the actual 3D clothes, let's do a bit of adjustment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these pants here and the hoodie actually, and I'm just going to do set to origin once again. I'm just going to click S and then X to scale it on just the X axis. Might need to adjust it a little bit more in just a second, but let's adjust this hoodie, which looks like we're going to have to export the hoodie separately because it looks like it does sort of like remove it when you import it. So I should just be able to delete the pants right here and then export it just like that and we should get the whole hoodie. I'm going to export to a separate folder as well so we don't have any texture issues. Okay, nice. Now we have got the fixed hoodie actually inside of Blender. I'm going to select my hoodie here and I'm just going to go into edit mode by clicking tab. Now I'm going to enable x-ray mode by clicking this. That's going to let us see vertices and everything that are on like the other side of the object. And then the most important thing we're going to be using here is going to be this button right here. This is called proportional editing. And as you can see, if you normally adjust one of these, it's going to be a little spiky and stuff. But if you enable this, you're going to see that it actually drags the whole thing along with it. And that's probably going to be your most useful and helpful tool in this little process. Because all I need to do here is select this and then just <laughs> do G, Z to drag it down. And we're pretty much done. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I can just, you know, go into sculpt mode instead. Sculpt mode is nice and handy as well. If I do um, subtract right here, up the strength a little bit, the size, just push it inside of the pants. Doesn't need to be perfect, just so we have it so it's not clipping as much. And there we go. I'm happy with how that hoodie looks. I don't think we need to do too much more adjustments. Now we can adjust the pants and it's going to be pretty much the same process. What you could even do is you can adjust the character size too. If I want to adjust the torso of the character and just move that in, it's kind of cheating, but I don't think it really matters to be honest. And there we go. You're pretty much done with adjusting them to fit them to your character. That is probably the hardest part gone. The next and final step is to select your accessory, go under the modifiers here, and we're going to be adding the surface to form modifier right here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to hide it just for a second, just so we can select the torso and both of the arms, just like that, uh, just by holding down shift and then just doing control j that's going to combine them all into one model there we go and now we can just select our accessory here go under the surface to form modifier and select the target right here we're going to select the little eyedropper and then we're just going to select the torso thing that we just combined and then you just need to click bind and that will bind it to this like combined sort of torso thing that we did and now it's literally as simple as just going into pose mode and now look at that it bends and turns pretty well it's a little bit broken down there it's definitely not the most reliable method as i mentioned in the start but it is of course the easiest way and you're going to get pretty nice results oh, and this is future me coming back here's an extra step you want to make sure to select your rig go under pose mode select the settings cog right here open up the little side tab here and under item under properties right here you want to make sure let's drag this out a little bit you want to make sure the render subdivision level is set to the same as the viewport so i'm going to set it back down to one if you leave it at two and you have the subdivision levels different this is what's going to happen when you render the clothes are going to completely go crazy if you do want to have higher subdivision levels in your render if you do try and change the viewport one right now you're going to get that same error so you want to make sure to go ahead and unbind with the surface form you want to unbind the clothing here go back and then you can change it to two and then you just simply need to rebind it on and you should be able to see now if you render it's going to be completely fine all right back to the video but then of course we we'll just do the exact same thing here with the pants i'm going to go ahead and add in the surface to form modifier um i think i have to combine the legs yeah i think i would have to combine them and then we'll just set the object to both of the legs there click bind and now you're going to see there we go that is actually is a little bit oh it breaks a little bit at the back i was about to say it looks clean from the front though man it's like those fake shoes how fast do i gotta walk and there you go that is in my opinion the easiest and best way to use 3d clothing for roblox gfx inside of blender if this helped you out make sure to like the video subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want to see next thank you so much for watching i'll see you all next time check out the patreon join the discord server goodbye